So welcome for today's webinar. And I'd like to introduce Patrick Kelly, who's going to be our presenter today from Digital Watchdog. Good afternoon, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I uh, hope everybody is uh, safe and uh, healthy and happy out there. Uh, and yeah, it is, uh, it is Friday, so that used, used to be a good thing. And so uh, we'll, we'll keep it as a good thing here. So I uh, wanted to talk to you today about the Digital Watchdog, and specifically we'll be talking about our uh, DW Spectrum um, solution. And so uh, the DW Spectrum solution really uh, is the, the uh, flagship product here at Digital Watchdog, and it kind of hits into a lot of different uh, industries. Uh, and so, and really it's because of the scalability of the solution that it works in uh, a lot of education facilities, a lot of uh, retail facilities, both uh, small to medium sized businesses and larger retail solutions, uh, healthcare, government, construction, uh, and then the growing uh, capabilities of uh, cannabis uh, and the cannabis industry are, uh, are prime markets for this particular product. Sorry, getting a little background noise. Let me just, uh, Josh, if you can hear me. There you go. Thank you. Um, okay, so, uh, so the DW Spectrum value proposition. You know, we talked about it. it, it the the solution being built for users. Uh, really, um, and there's really six key reasons, big reasons of why you to choose. Uh, DW Spectrum as your as your uh, platform. Um, we'll, we'll be talking about these in terms of its open architecture capabilities, um, cross-platform functionality, uh, you know the uh, the lifetime upgrades, the scalability of the product, and so forth. So let's start off with the uh, let's start off with that open architecture that we talked about. And so you know DW. So the DW Spectrum system uh, is comprised of a server, uh, the client software, the mobile application, and the cloud. And so when we start off with the server itself and we say open architecture, we're talking about uh, its capabilities of both, both running on Windows and a Linux platform, uh, whereas the client is available both on a Windows, Linux, and a Mac. So I'll be running it off of a Mac today and a Mac client. Uh, we do have the mobile applications that are available, uh, both on I iOS and Android, and both of those respective app stores. And then we have a cloud component that is uh, accessible through any of the major browsers of the system. Uh, but the open architecture capability goes even further than that with a built-in API, uh, built-in SDK, uh, so that the, the, uh, the system is available for anybody that wants to tap into the system, both, uh, both at the uh, server level uh, or sending data and device information into it. Um, when we talk about open architecture, one of the key points about DW Spectrum is it's uh, the supported device page right off of our website. And you'll see it's currently compatible with 442 manufacturers and getting close to about 8,000 different devices that have connected to, into DW Spectrum. Uh, out there in the marketplace. Uh, so it's, although we are a manufacturer and we'll talk about our products uh, in terms of our cameras and, and servers and so forth, uh, the product is open and available uh, to be to work with uh, current cameras out there from uh, major manufacturers like Bosch and Axis and and, uh, and so forth. Uh, in addition, uh, you'll also find on our website our uh, technology solutions provider, and so our, our technology uh, solution provider partners uh, that are compatible with the DW Spectrum. So these are things like uh, ATM and point of sale. And so there's different ways that you can integrate into a DW Spectrum system have, have based on the fact that it is an open architecture. So there's uh, different methods of integrating with, with DW Spectrum. Uh, and so you can check on our integration partner page for some additional information about uh, what the product is integrated with. Uh, the nice thing about DW Spectrum is its lifetime upgrades are included uh, without the need for any kind of annual agreements. 
Okay, so where other systems will charge for the ability to keep the system up to date, we include the upgrades. And the process is very simple uh, for the owner or the administrator of the system. It's really a one button upgrade capability to be able to push the upgrades out uh, to the servers that are part of your system out there. So a big point about DW Spectrum is that the interface is dramatically easier to use. Uh, ease of use of the system, everybody says it. We like to show it and we talk about it. Um, but, you know, um, and, and that's why we make the system, uh, the, the demo system readily available uh, to the marketplace to go out there and, and uh, show it uh, as often as possible. And so with that, let's go ahead and log into a system. So we'll bring up, first of all, we'll start off with uh, our, what I call them, our tile page that has all the different systems that are associated with my email address as part of the DW Cloud. We'll get into that in just a second. But you can see that uh, when I select the DW Spectrum uh, demo system, it logs me in. And then I have access to our servers out in California as well as a server that we have here in Tampa, Florida. And I can go and bring cameras up and I can put them into the, uh, the interface just by dragging and dropping them. Uh, once I've created this uh, layout, we can of course save the layout. We can add a background to the layout. So if you wanna make it a map type of facility, it's very simple to make a map. But you know, when we talk about the customizability of the layout, you'll see that the, the grid in DW Spectrum really shines in that I can take the cameras and move them at will. Uh, users can do this and they can resize and reposition the cameras and the interface as they, as they see fit uh, for their best uh, particular layout of their system. Bring another camera in and it just drops right into the grid. You'll also see that uh, as I've logged into the system itself, all the recorded video shows up down right across the bottom. So from a usability standpoint, we can seamlessly go from live to recorded video. And for all a user has to do is simply just take the mouse wheel and scroll. Uh, and so they can go from months to milliseconds with just the roll of a mouse. And at any point within the timeline, click on that point in the timeline and it'll go back and start playing back video from that point forward. All the cameras that are on display will be synchronized to that particular time and date. If I go to use my calendar function, I can go to a specific date. So if I wanna to go to the 7th at 2 p.m., it's real simple with the pop-ups and the, the timeline just worked with me. So it went from the 24 hours of the 7th in this case to the 60 minutes of 2 p.m. And then I can click the 220 mark and all the cameras that are on display or all the cameras that I bring over, so if I bring over another camera, uh, it, it too will display at that same time and date. And then I can easily um, fast forward and rewind through the video um, with the jog shuttle in the lower left corner, or I can simply grab the time bar and, and scrub across the timeline here. Uh, and then to get back to live, it's a simple mouse click in the lower right corner to bring it back into live and all the cameras that are on display. One of the primary things that DW Spectrum does for the user automatically without any user intervention is the ability to switch from this low res mode to a high res mode. And so this is uh, universal, works on all the cameras that are connected to it, but it's gonna take both the low res stream and the high res stream, and depending on the bandwidth that's available and what the user is doing. So when the user brings this camera up into a uh, full screen mode, or brings one of these cameras up into a full screen mode, it'll switch from that low res mode to that high res mode automatically. And then when they go back in to be able to view up to 64 cameras on a single tab, uh, the, the system will automatically start streaming those video streams in a, lo in a low res mode. Open up a new tab. It's just hit the hit the uh, plus button right here, and then you can go and just drag cameras over as needed uh, within the interface. So uh, we're going to uh, also look at our. We talked about the calendar search. One of the more powerful features within the interface is the smart search capability, and so I can uh, come in here. I've got my uh, and temporal timeline down here with all the recorded video. And then as I mouse over the camera, you'll notice the icon bars in the upper right corner. 
One of them is a little motion, and when you click on that, it'll say Smart Search. So what I'll do is I'll kind of queue this up, and so we'll go to this morning, and we'll go to the 7 a.m. hour. And so now my timeline represents the 60 minutes of 7 a.m. this morning, and I can use the, uh, the motion man there and just click, click and drag here. And so when I do that, down across the bottom in the timeline, there's a red indication of every time there was motion in that area. So we can index about a year's worth of video in about a second. And I can go and click on that red indication in the timeline there. And I can see when that car pulled into the parking lot here this morning. Uh, so it's very simple and easy for the user to search through their video. Uh, you'll see the new right panel with the, the new search capabilities integrated into the right panel, as well as within the timeline itself. I'm gonna pause that there. From the user standpoint, once they have the video they want, it's as simple as just right-clicking and dragging, and then they can come in here and export that video. They can export the video either as a single camera stream, or if they've got multiple cameras up, they can export up to 64 cameras simultaneously uh, from the export capability, all built into this, this single interface without ever having to switch for anything. So that's seamlessly going from live to uh, recorded video back to live uh, with, with the simplicity of the interface. Okay. So that's our smart search capability. I'm gonna open up another tab and you'll notice we do work with all sorts of different manufacturers, cameras as I mentioned, but all sorts of different resolutions of cameras as well. So uh, you know anywhere from a standard definition camera all the way up to our 48 megapixel panoramic camera, 180 degree panoramic camera, uh, all of our new uh, 4K. Uh, you'll see on our demo system, we have our new 4K PTZ. Uh, we also have our new 4K dome uh, connected to the system as well. And then in addition to the higher resolution, we get into things like the, uh, the popular fisheye. So we have a, a nine megapixel, Okay, uh, essentially a 12 megapixel chip with a uh, nine megapixel realized resolution. And so we have built in de-warping. So this is 100% client side de-warping capability within the DW Spectrum interface that I can click the de-warp icon here and I can set this camera either into a 90 degree mode, a 180 degree mode, or a 360 degree mode. And I can pan around inside of those, each of those modes as if it was a PTZ, right? And then I can also use what we call our regions of interest feature. So if I'll just bring another instance of this uh, fisheye camera over. And so we'll use this uh, region of interest, which is just a create zoom window. And so I can go and uh, draw boxes around areas and objects within the scene. You'll see it switching from low res to high res there. Uh, but I can go and draw another box. So we can draw multiple instances of these zoom windows uh, and the zoom window does all of the de-warping capability uh, as it's looking at a fisheye camera uh, through this. The uh, de-warping capability or the, excuse me, the, the uh, zoom window capability uh, when it works with the de-warping. So if I'm following a subject and they're going through the office and they leave the, uh, the, the uh, sales bull, bullpen there and they go out to the parking lot, I can just simply take that red box and drag it to the outside camera and continue to follow the person in that red zoomed in window. Uh, I can adjust the zoomed in window with my mouse wheel, kind of zoom in around outside of that as well. So in addition to all of the all of that happening, 100% uh, on the client side, again, no impact on the bandwidth of the system. Uh, no impact on the uh, on the server when we're talking about the warping capability. I mentioned uh, in terms of its open architecture capabilities and capabilities of interfacing with other devices. So one of those types of devices is a product uh, that we make that we have in our lineup that we call our SiteWatch product, which is an external. Uh, or internal or external motion detectors. We have uh, both a um, passive infrared, a dual tech, and a laser detector um, that can communicate with DW Spectrum. So uh, that communication within DW Spectrum is happening on the network. So there's no uh, contact relays to wire or anything like that. It's simply uh, network communication between the device and uh, DW Spectrum. 
So in our office, we have a sight watch outdoor motion detector out in the back. And inside of DW Spectrum, we have a robust rules engine so that you can come in and set up if then and or type of statements in the rules engine, uh, which would include things like bookmarking the video. So uh, in the case of our uh, outdoor motion detector, uh, being the, uh, the sight watch device is out in the back there, and we're having it send a, uh, an event into DW Spectrum that creates a bookmark within, within there in the back. So once the administrator has that set up, it's as simple as coming in, into, the, into the system and using the bookmark log. And the bookmark log is completely searchable. So you can have multiple devices in here uh, connected into this, and you can search uh, through the uh, search filter and the bookmark log of all the different systems in there. It'll queue that log up of all the different bookmarks. And then it's as simple as just clicking on, a, on one of those events It'll open up a new tab. It'll start playing back that video. And of course, you've got all the export capabilities right there within that, uh, within that function. Okay. All of this is being connected via, um, uh, so here's your bookmark log. And let's just click on one of these events. Yeah. Sorry about that. And I can open that up in a new tab and it'll show it in, in, the, in the view there. Okay. We do also have our uh, DW Cloud capability. Where did the bookmark log there? Okay. And so you'll see that uh, in the uh, client interface, it's associated with my email address. So my login, uh, if you recall back here, on the, uh, when we were logged into the system, before we logged into the demo system, I have tiles of each of the systems that my email is associated with. The nice thing about this is this is also on uh, all of my mobile apps. So both my cell phone, my iPad, uh, my home computer, my work computer, all of those, I don't have to load in individual sites in each one of those devices. I simply put in my email address and my password, and I get tiles to all my systems, so I get a consistent view across all my devices of all of the uh, all of the systems that I have access to. Uh, so, uh, DW Cloud provides that connectivity, and it provides it in a secure manner. So, uh, it's making a secure outbound connection from the site to our DW Cloud server, which is all uh, AW. AWS hosted uh, and gives the capability of connecting to the site remotely without the need to do any kind of port forwarding or any, any firewall penetrations. Uh, we make that connection right into DW Cloud. Uh, the nice thing about the DW Cloud interface, again, there's no additional charge for this. Uh, it's, a, it's always available. Uh, and then from there, administrators can then manage their users so they can share this by email address by self-generated password uh, so that the user can create their own passwords uh, so that you don't have to worry about doing any kind of password resets or anything like that. It's as simple if they forget their password um, on at the login process, there is a forgot password where you can have the system send an email, an auto-generated email to do a password reset right within the DW Cloud interface. So you get the consistency of all your devices be showing up um, the same tiles showing up and available, as well as the ability to, for users to manage their own their own passwords into the system. But of course, the owner or the administrator of the system can set the user role. Uh, so there's a user role management capability that gives you the ability to restrict what cameras they can see and what choices they can make, whether they can see live or playback, whether they could uh, control PTZs, all of those things are available uh, for the administrator to set up. 
Um, so one of the things we talk about back to the value proposition within DW Spectrum are, is that enterprise features are standard. So uh, that includes the ability to be multi-server, centralized management, health monitoring, video storage analytics, uh, all that user role management. So everything that I've showed so far and more uh, is available within a single platform. Um, so we sell DW Spectrum as a complete platform. So it's a one-time cost. Uh, and it includes uh, things like the ability to be a multi-server system, to be uh, centrally managed, to uh, include things like failover. So from an administrative standpoint, the administrator can come into the system. So we'll just take a quick look at the, uh, the server settings. And so you'll see that we have two servers out in California. And in my server settings here, I can uh, manage my storage. I can add external storage so we can expand the storage uh, either using a digital watchdog blackjack NAS type of product or any off the shelf, common off the shelf product to add additional storage to it. Uh, that storage can either be main or it can also be backup capable. So you can identify the storage location as a backup location and then use the backup settings to either back up on demand in, uh, by schedule or in real time. So essentially with the real time, you can re essentially record in two places, record, uh, record in, in the main location and then back it up in real time to the secondary backup location uh, in here. I also mentioned the storage analytics. So here you see all the cameras that are connected to the system, how much uh, storage they're taking up, how many days of storage we have, uh, what the current bit rate is. Uh, this is useful when you're looking at, especially when you're looking at expanding the storage or you've changed the requirements in terms of how much storage you want to have. Uh, you can take the existing historical information and use the forecast tab to add additional hard drive capacity and determine how many days of storage you're going to get on a system based off of uh, the storage analytic capability within the system. Uh, so. All of that is available for each of the servers that are part of the system. Uh, so here you'll see that we have two servers within the system. And I mentioned in, a, in a, an environment like this where we're in California and we have these two servers available, uh, back over in the server settings, you'll see on the general tab, you'll see a tab, a, a button that enables failover capability and a number of maximum number of devices that the server can handle and you can set the priority of the failover by camera uh, as either high, medium, or low priority in terms of those camera streams and those views. So in the case of uh, server, if server two were to go offline, all the cameras on server two could automatically come over and start being recorded on server one uh, while server two was offline once we've enabled that failover. So a feature like that is available in the base system. Uh, there's no additional uh, enterprise licenses or anything needed to make that, uh, that capability. It's just in terms of the design of that, uh, of that server capability. Okay. Um, back to the uh, little bit about the, in terms of the rules engine, uh, we're going to show this both on the uh, on the mobile device, but the, the go to webinar had a little bit of lag this morning, so easier to show it from the client standpoint. Um, but we can communicate with third-party devices. I mentioned before where uh, we showed in the bookmark log where our SiteWatch product is communicating with DW Spectrum over the network and sending uh, events or, uh, of uh, people in the back of the facility. Uh, are being sent in and being bookmarked within DW Spectrum. Uh, as part of the, uh, the lineup there, we also have our Nightwatch product. Uh, so we have two passive infrared, uh, both an 850 and 940 nanometer uh, infrared device, as well as a white light device uh, within the system. And so within DW Spectrum, these are all IP enabled uh, PoE powered devices that can communicate with DW Spectrum. And so here you'll see in the rules engine of Spectrum, we've created what we call soft triggers. Okay, those are essentially just buttons in the user interface to both turn on and turn off the light in this particular room as an example. But this could be uh, whether it's a soft trigger, motion on camera, or one of those uh, external uh, detection devices 
can communicate through Spectrum to the uh, IP-enabled uh, illuminating device. And in this case, we're, you'll see that we've created a rule in here that, the time, that uh, we're going to set the power level at 80% and we're going to time it out at 30 seconds. Uh, so we're going to turn this light on for 30 seconds based on the user. And here you'll see um, that we can make this available to only specific user roles or specific users, uh, what the icon looks like. We can even schedule when this is available to be uh, on and off. And so from a user standpoint, they simply just click this icon turns the light on in that room. Uh, so we're gonna turn the white light on for 30 seconds. Uh, the other icon here in the interface uh, will allow us to just quickly turn the light off rather than waiting the 30 seconds. So we can send a command to that device to turn that light off. Uh, all built into the DW Spectrum interface within the rules engine itself. Again, you can do things like turn lights on, move PTZs to presets, all of those things through that through that particular uh, the, the rules engine itself. Okay. All right. So DW Spectrum, as I mentioned, uh, you know, in terms of that value proposition, is part of an end-to-end -end solution. So it works with. Uh, whole host of manufacturers' cameras, as I showed earlier, but it also works with all of our Megapix cameras. Uh, it's preloaded on our Blackjack DVRs and our compressor analog uh, high definition over coax analog encoders will communicate with DW Spectrum. Going back to our Megapix product, uh, important point about our Megapix product these days is that it, they are uh, NDAA uh, compliant in terms of their manufacture, uh, both in uh, South Korea, Vietnam, and Taiwan. Um, the product is available in, all the way up, in, uh, as I mentioned, we have a 48 megapixel panoramic, uh, but here you'll see uh, some of the key technologies. We've just released some of our new 4K technology. Uh, our new Starlight Plus is currently, uh, we're filling the lineup with the Starlight Plus. So this is the low light color technology uh, built into our, our Starlight Plus pr products. So on our website, we have our product selector. Uh, where you can go in through the uh, using the product selector and see all of the new uh, Starlight Plus cameras just by checking the box for the features to show you the new uh, Starlight Pluses as we release them uh, going forward. Um, in addition to DW Spectrum being part of an end-to-end -end solution, I mentioned the, uh, the scalability of the product, so you can use this system um, from a single camera solution all the way up to uh, you know, thousands of cameras as part of a DW Spectrum system. Uh, and we've, we've developed that in our lineup with our, both our appliances and our edge devices. So we call our edge devices CAS, Camera as a System. And so this is a uh, camera that, in, that includes everything that I just showed you about DW Spectrum. Uh, on board the camera, so it's built into the camera. So these cameras ship with either 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of storage on board. They can communicate with the uh, NAS devices. They can be configured with the NAS devices. Uh, but these, uh, these can be combined into a single system, so you can take uh, 30 of these cameras and merge them together as a single system, with each camera being its own server and recorder, and you can have it back up uh, to a, a NAS device uh, on a schedule if that's uh, how you want it to, to configure it. Uh, so the, the uh, CAS product uh, is available, uh, and we're expanding that out in a multitude of form factors. So we've got that available both in our uh, fish eyes, uh, dome cameras and bullet cameras. Uh, we're just about to release our long range bullet as well as our um, uh, high definition four megapixel bullet. The um, Blackjack lineup is our NVR series. And so you'll find our Blackjacks are available uh, in a multitude of form factors, uh, anywhere from two terabytes all the way up to several hundred terabytes of storage, uh, all built in our uh, facility out in uh, Southern California uh, and all readily available through ADI. Okay. So in addition to the hardware and so forth, uh, we also have our uh, programs available. And so we start with our our, our dealer program, 
Uh, and so you can sign up for our dealer program right through our website. Uh, and so through our dealer program, we can do things like um, uh, training, uh, support, project registrations, and so forth. Uh, so you can sign up right through the website, right from the homepage, get to the, uh, the sign up here uh, within, within the system itself. Once you're approved and into our uh, dealer portal, uh, you'll have the capability of doing project registrations, license redemptions, uh, learn about new products. Our DW University is all available right through there. Uh, so you'll see things like, uh, you know, when we talk about the license redemption, um, you'll see here that we have a program that we call Double Down through our dealer portal, which allows you that when you're purchasing Megapix cameras, uh, we'll incentivize the use of those Megapix cameras with um, DW Spectrum licenses. So you simply just take your ADI invoice, send it to us, say, hey, you've bought this many cameras, and we'll send you DW Spectrum licenses that correspond with that. All that information is available on our dealer portal. We also have now, we just launched in, underneath our uh, Learn tab is the DW University. Uh, so we just went live with this. We have a special currently available for this for the DW University. I think it's a uh, buy one, get one free currently in this month uh, that allows you to take um, uh, courses as we develop courses. So there's currently a DW Spectrum course available. And so it's an online learning center uh, that you can sign up, talk to your uh, regional managers. Um, they'll be able to assist you with that. As I mentioned, we do also do project registrations uh, through the dealer portal, and we work in conjunction with uh, the team at um, ADI. And so uh, the project registrations are, are can be submitted here, or they can be submitted through ADI, and uh, we will process them and send them back to ADI, and they'll get, get them out to you. So for a little bit more about the ADI's project registration program, I was going to bring on Josh. Josh, are you there? Josh, you appear yep, to be muted. Here. There you are. All right, there you are. Great. So if you want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the ADI project registration program, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, this is pretty pretty straightforward, but um, ADI works with all of our vendors um, to get the best pricing possible for, for our customers. And in certain instances, say for projects, uh, we have a special team that I run that uh, that specializes in getting registrations to our, our various vendors. So in Digital Watchdog, in this case, they'll submit information from you guys uh, from the branches to a Digital Watchdog for registration. We handle everything on our end. We um, you know check for special pricing, and once we get that back, we get it into our system automatically. Get you the updated quote and get it get it back to you from there. Um, What's required for that varies from vendor to vendor. Generally speaking, you need a specific project name, location, end user, uh, the details that go with that, and we can submit all that for you. Uh, all you have to do is let your branch know, hey, I'm working on a new project. Uh, this is for you know uh, Central Methodist Church in this city, and we're putting a new security system in for them. These are the details. This is the bill of materials we're looking at. Can you see if we can get any kind of of special pricing on it. We take it from there, the branch comes to us, uh, we get it submitted over. If it's approved, we get special pricing back and put it into a quote for you and back to you. So the idea behind it is that we we pass along 100% of the discount. So whatever ADI gets off, you guys get 100% of that. And and the idea behind it is to close more business for you and for, for us with you guys. Okay, great. Thanks, Josh. Um, and obviously, right. if there's any so questions, if, let me know. Please. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I, that was my next step was any questions uh, from the attendees. Um, if you would go ahead and put them into the chat, um, we'll try to get them answered as, as promptly as possible. Uh, there was a couple questions that had come in during the presentation, so let me just uh, touch on those. One of the most recent ones was in terms of the uh, the DW University. Uh, it is not uh, it's not, it is not per class; it is per student. Uh, in terms of the cost, I mentioned it is a, currently right now it is a buy one get one free. Uh, in terms of the students uh, that's currently going on, uh, but that gets some accessibility to uh, all the classes 
as we develop them and post them. Uh, there currently is a DW Spectrum course, and we are current, we are in the process of adding a uh, a course on our C3 product uh, that works with our VMAX solution. Are there any uh, next question that uh, just came in in terms of uh, simple videos online in terms of the user guide? Uh, uh, help a user get comfortable. Uh, yes, absolutely. So we do have uh, uh, videos on our website. Um, one of the more uh, popular things that I use uh, for that particular uh, function in terms of when you talk about getting users uh, into the system, uh, comfortable with the system, so we're talking about just uh, basic users, is you'll find uh, some uh, documentation on the DW Spectrum uh, product page. Uh, so you'll find uh, documents that are preloaded. And we've created a, a simple little, uh, you know, two-sided, trifold uh, kind of uh, PDF um, that I, I typically refer to as the, the leave behind for uh, DW Spectrum. So when you're on the DW Spectrum page on our website, uh, you can go to the Documents tab on the Spectrum page. And so let me just get there. And so what you're looking for there is the user guide. I know you asked specifically about videos, and there are videos. Um, there are videos. Uh, let me address that more. But just um, you will find in here a user guide. Um, and so they're, they're, the quick start guide is typically for installers, and the user guide is the leave behind document. So there's the user guide uh, that's available for uh, quick user guide. This is the document that's available for users that takes them through smart search and downloading and exporting and things like that. Okay, got a couple more questions coming in as we're going through here. Uh, in terms of do we integrate with a two gig system? Uh, so, uh, and I would what I would say to that is, is that uh, specifically, uh, specifically, you'd have to check with uh, Linear and the two gig people. Um, the DW Spectrum system is an open architecture platform, and it allows for any third party device to send information in. So, if they can send information to us over the network, just like that uh, SightWatch device did, um, just like uh, Halo vape detectors do, uh, you can then take that information and make it actionable within DW Spectrum. So, things like if you wanted to um, bookmark on um, arm and disarm events, if you wanted video to pop up, all of that is available in our rules engine. It's simply just have the, the system, whatever it is, uh, you'll find it. Uh, send us that information and then we can trigger those events using the generic event as well as uh, the, uh, those types of solutions. Gentleman asked about uh, videos. Uh, in our support portal, uh, you will find our uh, knowledge base. Um, and so there are a whole host of articles. Uh, many of these articles have, um, have videos associated with them. Uh, so you'll find, I know, uh, for instance, uh, specifically um, in terms of uh, or links to videos through the, uh, through, through the knowledge base in here. Okay. So, um, sorry. Yes, this presentation is being recorded. Um, are the videos separate from the university? Yes, the videos are separate from the university. You'll find them on our uh, both on our knowledge base and in our um, uh, on our video channels, our YouTube channel, as well as we have a video specific for the university. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone else? Okay, one last question here. Uh, again, just to um, uh, reiterate this, this uh, for, the, for the question is, is that the uh, DW Spectrum product is uh, handled by license. It's a one-time license, and there's no uh, annual agreements needed for, uh, for upgrades. So going forward within the system, uh, as we come out with the, uh, the next version of DW Spectrum, from a system administrator standpoint, they can simply come in here to the system administration. They can go to the uh, updates tab 
as we publish those updates, they're available, and then the administrator can take those updates and push them down to the servers um, that are part of that system. Uh, if uh, there's other things that you can do in here that we get into in the certification in terms of loading in a specific build, or if you wanted to uh, uh, load in from a local source, you can also do that as part of the system here. Okay. All right. Yes, all of this is available through uh, ADI. Uh, so the products themselves, again, right through, we actually have uh, on ADI's uh, global distribution website, uh, we have our digital watchdog store within a store here uh, that has availability of links to all of our products uh, and your pricing would be available right through, uh, through this. Again, we do have our double down program. There was a question about that. Uh, in terms of you're able to uh, come in here, buy a, uh, a camera, a Megapix camera, take that and uh, take your ADI invoice, submit it to us, and we'll send you DW Spectrum licenses so that you can activate channels of recording um, right within the system. Most of our blackjacks, all of our blackjacks uh, are available that are, are preloaded with typically a minimum of four. Um, getting into some of our larger rack mount systems, they're, they're preloaded with eight licenses ready to go. Uh, again, that one-time license fee, okay? All right. Uh, so as any more questions come in, I will uh, email the response. I want to thank everybody for uh, attending today's webinar. Uh, again, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, send them in. We'll, we'll, we'll get that, those answers back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, but I wanted to uh, wish everybody a, a, a happy holiday, and um, thanks for attending. Thank you, Patrick, and to the attendees, we'll see you next week. We'll um, have one of these every day at the same time. Appreciate you attending as well. All right. Thanks, Mike.